As anyone who's ever gone in search of the Elder or tried to escape Imhotep will know, there's a lot of sand out there. I don't like sand. So you might be surprised to hear that we're actually running out of it. Yes, really. The UN is calling for urgent action to avoid a sand crisis, as consumption has overtaken natural replenishment. Just in case you thought we didn't have enough to worry about with climate change, a pandemic and everything else, we're now coming up short on a key ingredient for the construction industry. So how do we get to this point? And more importantly, what are we going to do about it? Let's start with the obvious. Sand is really, really useful. So useful that it's the second most consumed resource on this planet after water. It's used in pretty much everything, from cosmetics to wine and computer chips. But no industry has more of a love affair with sand than construction. It's used to create the steel in our skyscrapers and glass in the windows we look out of. It's in the paint we use to decorate our buildings, and when they get dirty, we blast sand onto them to spruce them up again. But there's one thing that hoovers up sand like no other. Concrete. It's the bedrock of the industry and one of the most widely used building materials in the world. 30 billion tonnes of it are produced every year. Sand can form up to 60% of a typical construction mix. It's used to bind cement and water. Now, for all of you thinking about the massive Sahara Desert and wondering what the problem is, well, here's the catch. Desert sand that covers roughly a third of the Earth's land surface is completely useless. The go-to idea is, is for sand is, is the desert land. However, sand grains from the desert, they are too rounded and they all have the same size. It's like ping pong balls, really. So imagine that you have a box of ping pong balls and you shake it. It's not going to compact and you definitely do not want to build that. That's why in 2014, despite being surrounded by the stuff, Dubai imported nearly half a billion dollars worth of sand to feed its construction boom. Desert sand is formed by the wind, creating tiny smooth particles, whereas the sand found on riverbeds and coastlines is ground down by water, producing a coarser grain which is perfect for construction. And that's just right. But it's the mining of this stuff that's starting to have a major environmental impact. If we are extracting more sand than is being supplied by those rivers, we are actually eroding our environment. We are impacting our natural resilience against sea level rise. We are degrading our soils on which we farm, and we are digging away the aquifers we drink from. In the US, scientists recently connected sand dredging in the San Francisco Bay with the rapid erosion of nearby Ocean Beach, while over in Indonesia, entire islands have been disappearing due to sand mining. You see, sand use has tripled over the last two decades, and that's largely a result of global urbanization. And demand is only going to grow as vital infrastructure projects are built across the developing world. Everything's being made worse by a lack of planning. As our use of sand has continued to grow, the infrastructure to manage it as a resource hasn't kept up. With the exception of a few outliers like Dubai and Singapore, most countries still produce and consume their own sand. It's not exported or shared around. I think less than 3% of the sand gravel resources we need is being transported over long, longer distances. Most sand comes from a radius of 50 kilometers. So as a consequence, it's, it's really dependent on the locality. Because sand is seen as a local resource, it's increasingly mined from unsustainable places. In some cases, that's even led to organized crime gangs cashing in on the industry. Illegal sand mining has been reported in over 70 countries, with devastating effects on habitats and grim consequences for anyone who dares to intervene. It sounds hard to believe, but reports from India show it's home to the world's deadliest sand mafias. Criminal gangs there have burned journalists alive, hacked activists to death, and run over police officers with trucks. There is this grey zone where people extract the material without environmental impact assessment, without proper monitoring. And when this gets organised, then you can end up with organised crime. And this is what is happening in several regions. 
The lack of regulation and localized approach to sand extraction may be producing devastating consequences, but it also offers a solution. In April this year, the UN Sand Observatory produced a strategy to deal with the impending crisis, and international cooperation was high on the agenda. If all stakeholders realize the true value of sand and we start planning well ahead in advance for the materials we need, we can make sure that the reserves we require are there and, and that no material is wasted. So at the one hand, it's about creating awareness. At the other hand, it's about creating dialogue, breaking down silos. The reports also suggested technological solutions, which could help clean up another industry with a pretty poor environmental track record. And mining is, is one of the, the biggest sources of mineral waste. One of the solutions that we envisage is that besides producing ore, they would go produce sand and gravel for local construction. The production of ore sand is increasingly being seen as a valuable byproduct from the mining industry, and one that avoids the generation of hazardous waste known as tailings. Instead of producing metals, iron ore and waste, let's produce iron ore and let's also process the material such that we can also produce clean sand and gravel and as such dramatically reduce the amount of waste that comes out of the mine. This may be one of the best ways to solve the problem at scale. I think the mining industry is on an annual basis producing 12 billion tons of tailings. At the other hand, we have 50 billion tons of sand, gravel and crushed rock, which is required by the construction industry. If you compare that, then we are in the same orders of magnitude. Now, there's no magic bullet to solve the sand crisis, but one thing is clear. Construction and the built world around us requires a lot of it, and with a little more awareness and collaboration, we just might be able to make better use of the sand we do have left before it's all too late. I am hopeful. It's one of those crises that is avoidable. This is something we can address. And if we approach it as such, we are already, I mean, very close to the solution. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about where construction is headed, make sure you subscribe to Tomorrow's Build.